Hi guys, happy Sunday, it's Claris, and uh, this is the Sunday Live for September. Just going to give this a couple of seconds, come, feel free to say hi in the chat while we are waiting for people to come in. And I'm just going to make sure that battery situation seems good. Hi, Jen. Hi, SK Calligraphy. You people are coming in. That's nice. How's your Sunday going? And are you ready to paint? Okay, so we've got like about 10 people here. And I'm going to start off with going through some of the products I'm using for today's painting live on YouTube. This is, for those of you who are new to the channel, I do once a month live painting on YouTube. Uh, and this is typically around the second Sunday of the month. Uh, this is the live for September. And for colors, I'm going to be using the Dallaroni set of 48. Feel free to use whatever products you guys have on hand. You don't have to use what I'm using. But in case you are interested in checking out the products I am using, it's going to be listed in the description below at the end of our painting today because I didn't get a chance to list everything I'll be using. Sometimes I kind of add more things, so I prefer adding it at the end of the session. For paper, I'm using my Legion Stonehenge Aqua Press. And this is the smooth, smooth surface. There's no texture, so I believe this is, what do they call this? Anyone in the comments? Hot press or cold press? When the paper is smooth, is it hot press or cold press? Okay, that gives it away. It's hot press. It's hot press. If you guess hot press, you were correct. Okay, for brushes, I am using the, absolutely love this brush. I don't know if I've said this enough times. The Velvet Touch Princeton Blooms number 12. This was created in collaboration with Jenna Rainey and Princeton. And I'm also keeping handy the uh, Princeton Neptune number six. I've got the Princeton uh, Velvet Touch number four. And I don't know, I might use this, I might not. We'll see how this goes. I might use this at the end. We'll, we'll figure it out. The Petals number six. Okay, and then for colors, you guys know I love my bright colors, so I'm thinking of going with this week's colors that I had used on the for the video that I did. We started off with using a beautiful muted base, which was a portrait pink. It's called portrait pink from the Dalaroni set of Aquafine colors. Permanent rose. And I love the pink going in with the vermilion hue. It's just a really stark and beautiful combination. So those two for sure. And then I've also got the quinacridone magenta. So we've got our nice cool, sorry, warm colors. And then I really want to add in some turquoise. So let's see how this actually pans out with the turquoise and this. And last but not least, let's talk about our greens. So I've got an olive green, which again, one of my favorites and I seem to gravitate towards. I'm also going to keep in here, what's this, the sepia, because adding a sepia to any of our colors that we have here just to get a darker tone is helpful. Uh, so if you're looking for shadow effects within your flowers or around it, you add a little bit of sepia with the respective color and you get a slightly darker version of it. So that's really helpful. So I always keep a sepia or a brown handy to mix in with there. Oh, I see a couple of more people are here. Hi, hi, Jean. Hi, Jill. Jean, Jen, Jean, Jill, Jen. I tried to say that real quick and yeah, faltered. <laughs> All the J's are here. Okay, so sepia, and then I want to include, I would like to include one more green to challenge myself because I always prefer the sap green or the olive green. So we'll take in a hooker's green as well. And I'm most likely, I'm going to give you a warning right now, I'm going to be mixing this green with the sepia to get more of a wooded, woodsy sort of green. And that is that. Okay, so ready? Let's go.
So I've got water handy on the side and I have paper towel as well in case I need to dab excess water or excess anything for that matter. If I happen to add any additional colors, I will let you guys know as I go along. But for now, this is what we're using and let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our nice big blooms. And I love the idea of continuing on the, with, in the direction of our nice big blooms, peony style blooms. So that's what we're going to start off with. Oh, one more thing that I forgot to add. Just one more thing is a yellow ochre. So we're going to do a yellow ochre for our flower centers to keep that nice loosey feel to it. So we're starting off with the yellow ochre. I'm going to be using the number six to get my yellow ochre on here. And then I'm using the blooms to get my nice petals in there. Okay. So we'll do, let's do like about three quick blooms before we get into doing some of the other stuff. Hi, Jennifer. Finally made it to a live. There's a lot of jades here today. Okay. Welcome, Jennifer. Okay, so we just went through the items, supplies that, I've, that I'm going to be using, and we're about ready to begin. So here we go. Getting some of my yellow ochre, very watered down version of it, but directly from the color cake. And keep that ready, but then go in. I'm going to get a little bit of this portrait pink handy on my blooms brush. Feel free to mix your colors onto a palette or a surface somewhere if that's easier for you. Most of my palettes are dirty and I have not cleaned them because I keep thinking to myself, why am I wasting color when I could use this for a sit down painting session? And that's the story of my life here. Okay, so starting off with our yellow, we're gonna do a very basic center. Yeah, Jen, Jean, Jill, and Jennifer. <laughs> Tongue twister. Okay, starting off at the center, I'm going to do, this is how I used to do my flowers initially, starting off at the center and then doing um, the petals around it. So doing a couple of little strokes, leaving a lot of white space, so kind of like in a circular fashion, adding a few lines, dotting it at the top, and just leaving it very loose and open-ended because we're doing... A very loose style of painting and then going in with this brush which already has our color I'm going to deliberately touch we want we want there to be quite a bit of water on this so we get a beautiful flow so deliberately touching some of the lemon or the ochre adding my first stroke second stroke and you see how it immediately just kind of disperses within that's what we want getting a little bit more uh, water on the tip of my brush I'm going to do a stroke at the top so I could get a nice bloom. We also want the top petals or the background petals, the top area to be more like background petals. So that's why more water on the brush. Getting a couple of strokes in there, dipping the tip of my brush in water again, getting a little bit more color. We're going to proceed and create more strokes to kind of encompass our nice big bloom and we've got a nice loose bloom happening here already as you can see so we're gonna go in get a little bit of this permanent rose pink and continue on with adding just a couple of dabs within what we've just created or painted and this will give us a nice beautiful soft blend of colors love 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 how these two colors interact with one another So here we go, simple and easy. It takes a little bit of effort, especially when you're first starting out with watercolor to sort of decipher how much is too much water um, and sort of how to lay down the strokes because a lot of it is with the flick of a wrist. That's what I like to call it. So now we'll do our little flappy petals that are outward. This time I'm not gonna make it too, too, too big. So adding a little bit extra color there and kind of extending onto this area here, leaving white space in between so that we're still getting that nice feel of light 
in our flower. Perfect. So this is what our big bloom looks like. Now this is where we can add on to it. And by add on, I mean taking another brush or you can use the brush that you've used already. I like to separate my brushes. One is for color, one is for water, that sort of situation. I'm going to get a little bit more of my permanent rose. And I'm going to drop this color in these areas here where the petals are sort of layered and this helps the eye kind of flow and kind of figure out where there's a break in the flower and you're giving your your flower a little bit more detail loose detail that is without actually going in and being obsessive about things this is also where you can add additional little framing strokes around your your flower if you wish the more you dab color in the area while it is damp the more the darker it becomes the more it stands out you'll also notice as you kind of add this color in different varying stages of drying up you'll get a different sort of blend with your flower wanted to add a couple of little strokes here and there of the darker variety kind of giving my flowers some deliberate whimsical feel to it fluffing it up making it look fuller with these tiny details around it and then again I'm going to lower the brightness on my camera here so you can see the the beautiful strokes of color that are happening here so again I'm just adding in more color at some point you got to learn to let this go so that it doesn't get too 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 overworked and that's good enough for me we've got enough detail and nice pops of color um, in fact if you want to take a little bit off your sepia using the number four and just sort of drop that in Okay, that's a little bit extra too dark so I'm gonna mix that on my palette a little bit just to get a slightly less dark version of that and just drop that color in while the yellow area is damp just to get a little bit of shadowy effects happening in there beautiful so now we can move on let's do a couple more of these flowers so once again same idea we're starting off with our we're starting off with the center. This time I'm going to have this, this flower facing this way, getting a little bit of that yellow ochre, and then we're going in to get some of that flesh tone, portrait pink. So we're ready, two brushes. Here we go. Starting off with little lines. Let me get a little bit more water in here. Dots at the top, lines at the bottom, fanning outward just like this. White space, lots and lots of white space in there. Then going in with our Bloom's brush. Let's do the first stroke to the side here. Second stroke on this side, lightly touching that center so we get that nice bloom of yellow happening. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, kind of adding a stroke at the top. Those are our background petals, lightly touching that yellow in the center there too. Getting a little bit more color and kind of adding to our flower. Making sure you're leaving as much white space as you can in the center here to kind of give your flower a little bit of breathing room so people can tell what's where going to get a little bit of that pink on my brush now for my third petal here and just I've just dropped that in there right next to this petal of mine and in hopes of it sort of blending in getting a little bit more pink I'm going to drop that in right here and also add some overlaying strokes of pink in there 
Now the key to this is it'll take a couple of tries. If you're trying it the first time and you feel, oh my gosh, this looks like a whole mishmash, a mess, just remind yourself nothing was done at first try. The more you do, the more you learn how things work and the more you're kind of going to, um, you're going to be able to gauge when is the right time to add color, when it's too late, if it's dried up things like that. So everything I'm talking about right now, it might seem like little tiny details, but trust me when I say, if you pay more attention to the details that I'm offering you and then execute, you get different results. So it might seem like tiny little details. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know, but do it with me as you're going along and pay attention to the details and you will notice a world of difference as you paint along. Okay, like how that's looking, we're going to get a little bit of that dark sepia in the center. So getting my number four, getting a little bit of that sepia that I pre-mixed or mixed from the first flower on the side there. Get a little bit more. Water it down just a tad so it's not super dark in the center. And I'm just adding a couple of dabs so that it seeps in and blends in with our yellow ochre. You just want a hint of stuff happening there. Now I want to do a little bit of, I want to introduce this vermilion in here. I like how this is a lot more pink. This is a lot more fleshy tones. So the second one will be a little bit more, sorry, the third one will be a little bit more vermilion-ish. If that is something, that's a word. <laughs> so I'm adding, I'm dropping a little bit of vermilion just in the center here. A little bit on some of the layers. I want there to be a blend of colors happening when you look at when you look in this comp at this composition finally in the end the colors need to sort of pick up from one another and so that's the whole point about doing that now. Dropping a little bit more vermilion right around this area here. It's giving it some nice dark, bright centers before moving on. Get a little bit of that over here too. Perfect. Okay, so now we move on to our third because I like to do things in odd numbers. It's a design thing. All right, so here we go. Starting off with the yellow ochre. Where's my yellow ochre? Oh, right here. One last time. Third time's a charm. And this time, this time I'll do the flower a little bit over here. I'll try not to touch these two over here. Let's see how that goes. So lightly grazing to kind of create this, these little lines in like a semi-circle-ish sort of manner and then dabbing at the top leaving ample enough white space in between so that's our center and then this time we're going to be using the flesh tone with vermilion so using my my balloons brush getting some color i'm gonna dip the tip of my brush in water just so it's nice and damp or wet got enough water on it do our first stroke Add a couple of dabs in the center here, then do another one just like this, lightly touching that yellow. Dipping the tip of my brush in water again, I'm going to do little arcs at the top of this. And it's very watered down. I'm lightly touching the yellow ochre so it seeps into these rivers of water that I have just created with my strokes. And then getting back to my pink dabbing a little bit on here, dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm going to do little side strokes like this. And this is all I'm doing for this flower, I'm not doing anything else outside of adding a little bit of vermilion in here. So here we go. Let's get some vermilion. I don't need this brush for centers anymore, so I'm going to get a little bit of vermilion. In here 
and we drop that in here. So getting it from directly from my color cake. This seems to be really dark. That's okay. It'll sort itself out. And if it doesn't, I've learned a new lesson. Dropping it into a couple of spots so we get a nice sort of colorful effect. Now, situations like this here, where it doesn't seem to be blending to my liking, I'm just going to go back in with water on the brush and kind of help it along. And then I'm just using very watered down versions of the of the vermilion to kind of add in thinner strokes like this to kind of indicate, you guessed it, layers of petals. And the more you underline these areas with the dark color, the nicer your flower tends to look. Getting a little bit of that pink permanent rose because I want to see what's going to happen. Adding color in when things are damp gives you such a gorgeous effect, um, especially once you know how much it's too much color, just good. So notice, one thing to keep in mind, if we add darker layers of strokes in between here, in between here, we'll get a hierarchy in our flowers in the sense that you'll be able to tell where the layers are. Right now they're loose and they're fun and they're soft. You might choose to keep them this way. You might choose to add more detail. I'll leave that to you, but we're going to continue on and create more flowers to this. Before we create more flowers, this is the point where I like to add a couple of leaves so then I know exactly how much space is left for me to add or create additional flowers around. So using I'm not going to use this brush for leaves. I will use my, actually, I will use this brush for leaves. I'll use them for our, I'll use this for our basic leaf drop. And then we can build on it by adding more with the smaller brush. So taking some of my olive green. And then mixing it in just to see what happens with the hooker's green. Not bad. This is not a bad green, but but there's always a but. Getting a little bit of sepia. This is a nicer green. So now I'm going to make sure this is watered down a lot. So we can get similar, similar mixes to consistencies to our, our base coat that we did with the with the portrait pink and now we do our leaves so for the leaves most of these areas are dried up already it would have been nice if we had a little bit of blending in there's some areas that are slightly damp so I'm going to drop in some color right now before it dries up right in between these these areas to kind of bump up the loose factor here I'm gonna do I'm going to do a stroke for, for a stem right here because this area is damp. Pressing down and trailing off to create that first loose stroke. You can always go back on and do more strokes if you don't like how your strokes, your initial leaves are looking. Always helpful. And then I'm going to add Add some right here. Notice how um, light things are looking because we can develop and paint over these guys to get some brighter leaves if needed. Start some there, start some here. Let's do a couple happening right here. This is also where you can drop in some added, like the another variation of green. So I'm going to get some of that olive green right away. 
and just drop in a couple of strokes in between here. Right when these, these areas are damp, just to get a nice blend of different greens. Really, really helps with the overall look and look of things. Dropping some into these areas where they're damp as well. And then let's just end with a little bit of green happening at the top. Perfect. So that's great. Um, not going to do much more with this green. Let's move on to doing our little filler flowers before we decide what else needs to be done. So using the number six, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get the next set of colors. And for that, I'm going to be using the turquoise. I know the turquoise might be super bright, but let's let's try. This is where I like to say this is how you learn by just trying things that you would normally not try because remember it's just a piece of paper if you don't like how it looks if you think it's a bad idea after it's done you can always try it again and just glean from the things that did work out for you as opposed to the things that didn't as well and I think what I'll do is mix a little bit of the quinacridone magenta in with it as well I think it'll be a nice beautiful purple that'll happen so we're going to start off with, that was my computer making a loud noise. We're going to start off with doing the blue. And let's make these flowers um, just like little dabs of color and maybe something that's kind of like an array. Whoop, whoops. Guys, look what just happened. But I'm not going to touch this because we're going to go with the flow. Starting off with little dabs here. I'm just creating like an array of color. I know this is in here, but it, I think it's going to look like a whole thing that wasn't an accident once it's done. So we're going to work. I'm going to leave this without dabbing anything off. Let's just see what happens. Here we go. I'm doing another set here. I know I've watered down the turquoise by a lot because I just want it to be little hints. And then we're going to go in with the second color before it dries up and add a couple of dabs in there too. So notice how I'm doing my strokes. I'm leaving it like almost like dabs of color, not really doing any petals or anything, just adding dabs of beautiful turquoise. So let's get some of that quinacridone hue, magenta that is. Water it down by a bit and I'm just adding a couple of strokes in between here just to sort of see what that looks like first. And it looks okay so I'm not going to do too much of it because I like the blue by itself. I think it works better. But I will drop in just a couple of dabs And then go back into some of the blue and drop in additional strokes of blue within these giving me some nice hints of dark within these areas here now going in with my um, number four Princeton Neptune. Let me get some green. But I'm mixing this green in with my sepia. So that's very, very dark. So I'm going to get a little bit more of the hooker's green in there. So this is a darker green than what we first laid down, and that's fine because there needs to be some sort of difference with the ones that we've been using. Uh, the greens so that they stand out more and all I'm doing is connecting 
connecting these guys right now. Connecting these guys over here as well. They all don't need to be connected, but I like to because it's almost like a game of Tetris sort of situation with me. Even though I say, it's loose guys, you don't have to connect them, it's okay, I end up always connecting them for some reason. I am aware of the irony of it all, me telling you guys not to do it, meanwhile I am taking a lot of pleasure from connecting them. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so here they are connected. And you can see how it kind of really adds something pretty to it because these guys in the center don't really have too much happening. I just lowered the brightness on the camera here so you can see a bit better. And now we get to have fun by adding some leaves um, to this and just have it on a smaller scale in comparison to the big leaves that we have. And this will add some nice little details to our overall picture. I definitely want to add a whole bunch of that happening over here. You can have some overlapping on the petals as well. Adds a nice bit of depth to things. At some point, if you want to add a little bit of splatter, I always leave that to the very, very end. I think um, I think that would be nice over here, especially for me because I have my little faux pas with the blue, although it seems to be blending in quite nicely with things. Um, I like to add movement, and so I'm going to add, um, let me add a stem that kind of looks like that. And then loose leaves attached to it. Adding some kind of wiry stems coming out from these guys here. Notice how I am not doing one stroke um, leaves anymore. I'm kind of doing a couple of strokes to really give them this organic feel. Like this one right here. And then you can even do a little bit of fluffing. So like fluffing is essentially just adding dabs of green in and around the areas here so that they are overlapping and creating a sense of fullness in your composition. So you tackle each area, take your time doing this. Now compare this area here to this area here and you'll notice the difference between if you if you do a little bit of fluffing versus if you don't and you keep it just open-ended there is a difference just got to move some stuff over here so I can have more space if you, if you guys have any questions please feel free to add it in the comment section and I will get to it once we are close to done or on our way to being done. Um, here we go, just adding some more at the bottom here. Overlapping is good, like I mentioned. So this is where getting a slightly darker green and then just adding some leaves on top, overlapping these guys, creating some nice darks and contrast in your in your painting even if you add a little bit of turquoise in your in your green that might also create some nice interesting greens just a suggestion i'm going to add a nice little flowy line this way notice how the line is not even completely painted in I'm just going to leave it that way. I want to darken the areas that are closest to the flower, just kind of indicating more foliage 
between these areas here. Not getting rid of the white space entirely, I'm just dabbing dark spots of green in that area just to kind of give it some nice depth adding. Now these areas here, I'm trying to darken these areas, but also um, this is where it gets a little more concentrated and less loose, where you're trying to add dark green, but you're you're doing it in the shape to kind of go around the the petal strokes that we have happening. So this way you're really outlining those flowers quite a bit to make them stand out more. And you can see that happening right away. Oh, don't worry if you guys are just joining. Um, this will be a replay. You can watch this anytime, multiple times on the YouTube channel. That's what I like about the lives. If you can't make it, don't worry. Just watch the replay, guys. Okay, so adding some of this on here, you can definitely add some in between the top two flowers as well. Give, give your composition a good enough balance of white space and then also shadowy bits that really make your elements stand out and pop. Again, you notice the lift, right? I added a little bit of blue to my green, the turquoise, and then added more of the sepia. It gives me a nice dark green. And drop some of that in here as well. And in here, if you just have a bunch of like green strokes in between your flowers, that also works. It's totally fine. You can even add a couple of details within the leaves that you just added. Just adding variation of green into your, your painting. And I definitely want to add some leaves overlapping on these guys here. So. If I go on a smaller scale and just add my loose strokes of green, that is good enough. Mixing more green for myself, and then let's tackle this area at the top here. So now with this, we've got some flow happening here at the bottom. I want to definitely have some happening at the top as well. So what I am going to do is do a little bit of a nice twirly stem, let's just say over here and then just adding I'm controlling how big this leaf is just because I don't want it to be too overpowering And there's a question, do I like to use, do I like to mix different greens in the same painting, olive green? Yes, I do. Um, if you watched any of my videos, I always like to say at least have two different greens in your paintings because it really does elevate the, um, it just adds depth and it makes your painting look that much nicer and more visually interesting. At least that's what I have found. And the more green you add variations of green, as long as they are blending in nicely together, I think you, um, you'll you get very good results for sure. So for instance, now I'm going in and getting a little bit more of that olive green in here. You can even add overlapping, like I said, just to sort of increase the, the depth Like notice how it just sort of lifts off the page. And let 
let's see, I'm gonna do one more kind of falling this way downward because why not? You can have one here, one here, one there, adding nice fresh movement to your your paintings as a whole. I'm adding a little bit more at the bottom here too. And going back to add my leaves here. So you can see how these strokes that I'm doing with the green were just literally overlaying on top of what we've already painted. And it's significantly standing out in, in comparison to the flowers. And this is what I had mentioned initially when we first finished doing the flowers, is that if you add more strokes in between the flower petals to really emphasize where the different layers are, it will pop a lot more. Okay, enough with the dark green. I'm going to go back to getting more of a neutral mid range green. So, mixed, mixed a bunch of colors here. I'm going to get a little bit of that yellow ochre in it. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, softening it down a lot. More. And let's add, actually before we completely are done with the dark green, I want to add a little bit of that at the top, at the top of um, our area here at the flowers. So we've got some semblance of, I know I said I was going to do it at the top, but this area is still damp. I just want to make sure I get a little bit of stuff happening here before we move on. Okay, here we go. So um, I'm going to paint this directly on top of this area here. So this the, the greens overlap one another. Okay. Let's get a nice darker green here happening. Overlapping once again. And if you put the darker, make sure you're dropping in darker versions of the green at the base where it touches the flower. This creates more of that dark to light effect, making it seem like it's coming from under the flower, so it's darker, all that good stuff. Drop in some green in there. I'm just kind of fluffing this area so it just doesn't look like it abruptly ends and then there's nothing else there. And this is what I mean by fluffing. I've mentioned this many, many times, and I'll mention it again. It's just taking looser dabs of, just taking um, lighter versions of the color you've already used and just sort of dabbing it in specific areas to kind of give your overall painting a loose feel. So for instance, I don't have much happening here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add I don't know, let's, let's add another stem here. I'm just kind of lightly dabbing to get random little bits of green. And this, um, you can also do a splatter, and that kind of works in a similar fashion. The, the only difference is doing it manually this way not that you're not doing it manually with a splatter, but this way you have more control over where you're adding things. With the splatter, you have less control. The only thing you're controlling is the fact that you can 
sort of manage which direction it's going to be falling in. So let's do a little bit of a splatter. And, and I think then we are done. So if I'm going to get, I'm going to use the number four because I don't want my splatter to be huge. Then taking my number six, I'm going to lightly tap there. A little bit at the top. Definitely here in this area, we've got some beautiful white space happening there. So why not get an ample amount of splatter happening there? A little bit here. So what I've done for these areas here, because we don't want splatter every direction available, so I'm watering it down to get a lighter color splatter. So we've got some nice dark areas, we've got some light areas, just really softening up the whole thing. And last but not least, because my brush fell down and I got dabs of blue around here, it kind of really goes with everything, but it would also be nice to add a couple of, I'm getting some leftover blue from my table here. It, it, it would be nice to sort of go in and add dabs of blue while these areas are, are damp with the splatter. And just sort of add, throw in a little bit of blue here and there. And it just pops. Add a little bit of blue here and there at the top areas here. So, so what happens is when you're adding this blue in the areas where you just splattered with green, you're getting a nice blend of colors. So it almost looks like your eye will catch, the blue will catch your eye, but it's sort of blended in with the, with the green. And so it almost looks like a, um, like a trick like a trick, is that what I'm looking for, the word? Yeah, okay, that's it. Very, very muted versions of the blue all around, but the overall picture you can see. Let me just zoom out a bit, there we go. Is it clear? Yeah. So that's it, guys. So let me see your questions, if anyone had any questions at all. Um, I've done blooms like this so many times in quite a few different lives as well. But you can never get enough. Okay, so questions. Hi, Clarice. Do you like to mix different greens? I already answered that. Romy, yes, I love my different greens. Um, Rucha, what if... I cannot invest in the best quality supplies as a beginner. Also want to know if you would offer evaluation of work by your subscribers. Um, so if you cannot invest best quality supply, I'm, I'm not sure what, because there's varying levels of supplies. Um, you can still learn because the way I initially learned was just with using basic products. So I had my Canson watercolor paper which I find a lot of people have mentioned over the years that they they don't like it as much, they don't get the best results. It's not 100% cotton, but it is possible to learn with basic supplies and then grow from there. The thing with colors is sometimes you'll find when you don't invest in at least decent medium range colors, you'll get those powdery sort of after effects, which is not the greatest. But out of all of them, if you, if I had to say invest in one thing for sure, it would be paper because it's with the paper where you're able to get those nice blooms. It stays damp longer when it's 100% cotton and you get beautiful bleeds and stuff, which is what watercolor is all about. So if you had to pick and figure out where to disperse your, your um, money, I would say for sure paper first. Um, Color, color and brushes are just as important, but if you start off with, with the paper, I think you'll be good. Okay, 
Well, that's it, guys. Thank you for joining. If no one had any questions, I guess we can uh, carry on with our Sundays and have a good time. And feel free to try this again. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to list all the products in the description below. So if you've got any questions or anything, yeah. And then if you happen to post on Instagram, don't forget to tag me. I would love to see what you guys have done. And, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't answer the second half of your question. Would I offer evaluation of work? Absolutely. I always tell you guys, you paint with me, send, send it to me on Instagram, send it to me on Facebook. I'd love to see it. And, uh, if you want to, if you want feedback, happy to offer it as well. All right, guys, have a fabulous Sunday. We'll chat soon. Bye.